Okay, uh, we're going to do another video, uh, this time on the first mythical creature. Uh, it could be hard to get them set up and running, so hopefully this will be use for, useful. So um, I've already cloned down the repo. This kind of pairs well with the other video we did. Um, so I'm inside the root of the uh, mythical creature exercise, or I'm sorry, the root of the Ruby exercises directory. You can see that by doing print working directory, and it shows I'm in Ruby exercises. Um, so I'm going to CD into mythical creatures and then do LS to see what we got um, and read me. So I'll just go ahead and open all this in Atom. So I'm going to do open, uh, I'm sorry, Atom dot. And it should show up here in Atom. Delete that one. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Cool. Uh, okay, um, so we've got a readme. I always recommend starting with a readme. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts for Atom is Command uh, Backslash. It's a key right above the Enter button. Um, it lets me toggle um, the sidebar, so super useful because the sidebar takes up a ton of space. So it's there. Now it's gone. Uh, so they're basically going to say talk about how to run it. We're going to cover that in a moment, and then they say the suggested order is start with Unicorn. Um, so I'm going to start with Unicorn. So I'm going to bring the sidebar back out. Um, I'm going to open up the test directory and open up unicorn test. And then I'll close the sidebar. Um, so this is the unicorn test that we're going to make pass in just a moment. So to run it, uh, we're going to do uh, Ruby test. So we have to find this file and do Ruby that file. So it's going to be Ruby. Um, if I hit tab twice, because I love the tab, um, it shows you what things are available to you. Um, and so Ruby test, I hit tab again, and it finishes that. And then if I hit tab again, it shows me everything that's inside of the test directory. So I can look and not have to guess. So there's unicorn test, so I'm gonna hit U, hit tab again, and it finishes the rest of that. Cool, enter, we're running it. Uh, gem conflict error, ah, um, RVM, ignore this part, RVM use 2.5.0. Uh, I had the wrong version of Ruby underneath the hood. So we're running it. Um, cannot load such file. So this is the error that I'm getting. Um, so if you run this file, so this was Ruby test unicorn test.rb, cannot load such file uh, unicorn load error. And then it's showing that this is coming from line four of the test. So over here, line four, require relative dot slash lib unicorn um, dot dot slash lib slash unicorn. So this is um, basically saying this file doesn't exist. Uh, this is Ruby speak for trying to go load another file. If we open up our sidebar again and look inside of our lib directory, we can see this is empty. Um, so this dot dot, it means um, it's going up one directory uh, and then it's entering the lib directory and then it's looking for a file named unicorn, um, which isn't there. So let's make it. We can do, uh, we'll use the GUI. We'll just right click and do new, um, file and we'll name it uh, unicorn.rb. Cool. So now we have this empty file and we have this unicorn test. So when we run this test again, uh, ha, lovely, we get a different error, which is just what we want. So I'm going to make that smaller. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. This is my preference. I really, or my preference is this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to split this file to the right. So I just right clicked, split it to the right. Um, now we have two things. Uh, I have this unicorn over here. Um, so I, this is how I tend to run my tests. I have the test file on the right, um, and then the class on the left, and then my terminal on the back, because it's nice to be able to see everything. So uh, we're ready to start making this test pass. Um, we know we're in good shape because we got all these S's and errors. Um, so uninitialized constant unicorn test unicorn. Did you mean unicorn test? And then Always look at the line numbers, line nine. So let's look at line nine. So it's trying to call unicorn.new out of this file, which doesn't exist. So we'll do class unicorn and that and save that. So let's try it again. And cool. Uh, so wrong number of arguments given one expected zero initialize new test as a name, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you read the object oriented uh, guide, which you should, um, you'll know that when you create a new object, it calls this new method, uh, which is an alias for initialize. So we can do def initialize. Um, and we'll just leave that there and do, do end. Um, 
initialize. I always spell initialize wrong, so if you get errors and it can't find the method, assume that you spelled it wrong. Um, so the same error, given one expected zero, uh, so we'll let it take, uh, this will be a name. Uh, so it's trying to call unicorn equals unicorn.new. Um, so we're just going to say it's Robert, her name, so name. Uh, and then we'll run this test. Cool. Undefined method name for test it has a name. And then this file failed in line 10. So that meant this line passed. And then in here, it failed. And it says um, undefined method name. So when it called unicorn.name, uh, th that wasn't a known method. So um, the way you can create, we've, we've got these adder reader things, adder writers. So we're going to do an adder reader name. Um, and that should give it a name variable. So we'll run it again. Expected Robert and actual nil. So uh, you'll probably be mentally screaming at me right now, you know, at, na at name equals name. Um, so now we're taking this the first argument that's passed into unicorn, um, and we're assigning it to name, uh, or the assigning the attribute named name. Oh, this is confusing. To name, and it's a reader, whatever. We're gonna make it pass. Cool, it passes. Lovely. Um, so we'll move on to the next test. And we'll run it. Undefined method color for unicorn. Makes sense, because. OK, so also I'll point out a couple other things. These tests all run independent of each other. So when this test is running, um, all of this stuff is like not known to anything. It's an object that was created and then deleted. Uh, so we've got this new unicorn named Margaret. And we want to be able to assert equal white unicorn.color. Uh, right now, we don't have a method for color. Um, so we can make this pass. So I'll, I'll make this pass cheaply uh, by def color and uh, undefined method color. Cool. So we'll run that because now we're going to get not like now we have a method named color and it's expected white and we got nil. Um, I cheat sometimes in here. So I'm just going to pass in white because the method always returns the last line of the the last line that's inside the method. So this will now pa return white. Uh, OK, so if you look Closely, you'll see that this is now undefined method white question mark, uh, which is in fact distinct from a um, method name by the same name that doesn't have a question mark. So like def color white, we could do def color question mark, and and this could be um, foobar or um, x y z, and these are now two separate methods. Uh, so undefined method, white, question mark. Oh, right, so color, color. So I could do white, question, oh, I can't type, white, question mark. And now we expected true, and we actually got x, y, z, this thing. So um, this is not good code, and this is not what we're going to run with. Uh, we're going to make it pass. We're going to instantiate this. I wanted to have an attribute reader called color, because that's something that's known to the object, like a, it has a name, it has a color, that makes sense. Um, and then we're going to have to pat, take in an argument. Uh, well, we'll just assign color equals white for now. Um, so that means unicorn.color. Oh, we need to add the color uh, adder reader. So unicorn.color will now call this method, and it's going to return white. Uh, so this line is still going to pass. Um, and this line is still going to fail. Let's see if I'm right. Undefined method white, question mark. Cool. All right, so now we can add a def white again. And we want this to return true, right? Because unicorn.white question mark should return true. So I'm just stubbing this out. I'm doing this very uh, incrementally. And I know that this is not, like, I'm not trying to jump straight to the correct conclusion at the end. Um, I'm just trying to kind of make the test pass. So this made the test pass. Great. Um, we'll leave that, and then we'll fix it when we have to make this test pass. So test, it does not have to be white. Um, makes sense, so we'll run it, and it's going to fail. Uh, wrong number of arguments given to expected one. So this dot new was called with two arguments. 
Barbara and purple, so a name and a color. So we want to update our initialize. We're going to take a color, and then we're going to just set color here. So at color equals color. And we run it, and we expected on line 23 true, but we actually got false. I'm sorry, we expected false, but we actually got true. So line 23, expected unicorn dot white. Of course, when they call dot white, it's going to come back true. Um, so this can't just come back. We can't hard code this to be true or false. Uh, we need it to look at something else and then decide what the answer is. So let's make at color equals equals white question mark. So if at color equals white, uh, that I, um, true. Else, false. And so we did just a little quick true false if else um, checking for these things. So let's see how that does. Uh, wrong number of arguments, given one, expected two. Now, this seems like the same error above, right? Given one, expected two, given one, expected two. Um, oh, I just made an error that I warn everyone to do. Read the freaking error message and don't fix something uh, that is actually the wrong thing. So what line is this breaking in? It's line 14 of the test. The last test is now breaking. These two tests were breaking um, when I made this test pass. So. Uh, because these are only giving one method, and this now expects two, so we'll just set a default here. So color equals white. So this is how you set a default. If only one argument is passed, color will be equal to white. Otherwise, you can set whatever the color you want. So those all passed. Great. Um, I'm going to refactor this real quick. So we've got that. Um, oh, another one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts is command enter and command shift enter. It moves the cursor one line up and down to a new line from where you're at. So where I was here, I'm in the middle, and I goes down and creates a new line. Uh, so we're, if color equals white, we want it to be true. So I'm going to say return true if color equals equals white. So this should make this test pass. Um, I bet this other, I bet one of our tests is going to fail. Yep, so the failure here, expected false, actual nil. Uh, so this is never going to return true um, because it's it's going to return nil normally. So And then this return exits the method. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, so now we'll put false here. And now it'll pass. Because this method, if it gets hit, it stops the execution and just goes out with a true. And if it doesn't, we'll go to a false. Now, if I take this true off, um, I don't know. What'll, I feel like we're going to get an error because false is going to be kind of generated. I'm sorry, true is going to get generated if color equals white. But then the method is going to keep executing and it's going to hit false. Yeah, so expected true, actual false. So you can do a return to exit the method early if needed. So we'll run this again. And it passes. Cool. All right. Last test. Uh, I'm going to delete all this now. Uh, undefined method say. So oh, you can't say that or see that. Uh, this says that. So we obviously need a def say. And uh, say is going to take an argument uh, message. And we'll just return the message for now. And let's run it again. So it expected wonderful with these sparklies. And it actually got wonderful exclamation mark, which happened to be what was passed in. OK, so we need to do something to message. Um, we could do message plus. Uh, we're going to see if this works. So I'm just going to do strings plus the message plus more strings. And let's see what this does. Cool. So that's basically what we expected. Uh, so now I can just paste in this here and this here. And this should pass. Cool. Another way of doing this, if you're curious, we'll comment that out, do a new line, is with string and interpolation. So you can do message, and then 
that and that. So these are two ways of writing the same thing. All right, it's the end of the test. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm gonna do another video that's gonna dig into um, like using pry uh, and like testing assumptions right now. We never like, well, whatever. I'll just get to that there, but watch the next video. It's not just, yeah, it'll be, it'll be worth your time. Okie doke.